So when we're traveling overseas, often uh, this is what we have for equipment when we're on the road is a pair of dumbbells uh, and the rower. Sometimes we have a few more things like we have our pulley system, uh, our anchor pulley system, or even some resistance bands. Uh, at the same time, we may add a little more weight. We have some weights available, but sometimes with space available in the truck and trailer and uh, you know travels and how much equipment we have room for, these would be like almost the go-to, a pair of weights for some strength training and let's say a rower for some additional uh, cardiovascular and conditioning work. So I know often I, I meet people and they maybe even have less, maybe even just uh, one dumbbell or a kettlebell. I wanted to show you something. If I was, and this morning, I was just gonna do a little workout uh, prior to going for a little ride. If I was to say uh, um, uh, a higher priority exercise that I would suggest, uh, if you have like a single dumbbell or a kettlebell, um, and that's all you have, uh, let me show you this little workout right now that I think uh, some of you can put to work. Now, as far as the weight goes, you're gonna have to obviously work with what you got. And often I say to people, if you've got a little lighter weight, maybe you do more repetitions. Um, and if you've got something a little heavier, like this is probably a little too heavy almost uh, with the 45 for uh, especially my bad shoulder. You'll hear me say it in post before, I don't have a rotator cuff on my left side. That doesn't stop me from doing strength training. I just gotta be a little smarter about it and uh, you'll see how I'll adapt to that. Where on my right side, this weight's about right um, for the repetitions I'm targeting for. Um, again, don't get too caught up in repetitions like you've got to do four, six, 24, whatever that is. Strength training uh, to me is, you know, is going to work in a lot of repetition ranges. So um, yeah, work within your, you know, maybe the recommended amount of intensity level. Today, I'm probably working in that, uh, I call it uh, uh, seven to eight PIL and PIL I refer to uh, perceived intensity level. So here's, let's get to it. Um, I've warmed up properly. I've used the rower. If you don't have a rower, maybe you do jumping jacks, uh, maybe go for a jog and uh, get your body, get your temperature up a little bit, get your joints, uh, your synovial fluid moving in your joints, your heart rate up a little bit, and uh, generally just get the mind a little bit warmed up for the, for the exercises. So uh, this one is, uh, you know, the clean press, which you see me often do. Um, and, and I giggle because it seems to be a lot of the exercises I do, but it really is that good for, for our sport. It's hip hinging, it's shoulder hinging, pressing, uh, stability work. Um, and to me, it complements all the riding that we do in that position of more internal rotation. Um, I believe if I was to do one thing, and I will do more things in the future, I'll show you more, I'll, I'll add to this, um, as some of you are waiting for the online training, um, I wanna give you something that you can do for now, especially let's say on season. Okay, so we take this uh, single dumbbell that I've got, and again, uh, feet position, uh, I go a little bit wider here, just uh, again, just complementary to hip hinging a little bit differently and placing the dumbbell in between my legs. So um, I'll show you from the front view and I'll give you a sort of a side view in a moment too. So I'll take the dumbbell, okay, and I start with a um, position where I'm just sort of getting myself set up, such as shoulders back and down, uh, good posture with my neck and keeping my chin down. Imagine you have like a, like a grapefruit or something underneath your chin, so your neck is always in line with your spine because your neck is a part of your spine. And your shoulders are down and back. We call that depressed and retracted. And then we're hip hinging without rounding our back. Okay, so let me give you the single clean press here movement. And now for the sake of uh, time, I'm not gonna crack off all the reps here, but now I wanted to show you, uh, I would do this shoulder and then I would move, you know, almost immediately, maybe a 15 to 30 second break and I'll go this shoulder. Again, no rotator cup on this side. Let me show you how, um, if I have no other weight, I don't just say, oh, my shoulder's bad, I guess I can't train. We can still be smart about this. And I can tell you this from experience, regardless of you know, advice that I've received over the years, and you know, I'm, I've been doing this for a long time, this has worked for me. It may not work for everybody. Your shoulder may be irritated by this if you have shoulder issues. For me, it's been positive. 
uh, anybody that knows me for a long period of time, my shoulder was pretty achy and I was um, not doing much about it. And I started to get back into it. And I said, you know what, I'm gonna see how it is. Even though I've got a little bit of um, arthritic development over the years, uh, it's actually relieved that uh, discomfort and pain by doing some of these exercises. So you'll have to find out what works for you, but here's what works for me. So I'll take that, that dumbbell and just to be sure, what I'll do is I'll use my other arm as a bit of like a, a spotter or let's say for a little bit of guidance. So I'll come up, might look a little sloppy, but I can get better. There it is, down and down and down. To me, the eccentric movement versus the concentric, the up, the eccentric movement is very valuable. So by me coming down and controlling that weight as best I can. And again, I'm just jumping in this for video purposes and trying to talk to you and do it right. If I can really focus on myself and do these, I can really guide myself and do these properly. And as you can see from these big movements, my breath is up, my heart rate's up. That's the conditioning part that everybody who follows anything I do knows I'm a bit of a fan of. Um, you know, and maybe that's the side that people benefit from, from CrossFit because they're not just lifting weights. They're in a circuit or they're doing, um, you know, big movements, uh, functional movements, uh, multi-joint movements. We call them, you know, compound movements in the strength world. So yes, how I did this workout earlier and I did it and I wanted to film it is that I did a set of uh, six to eight on my right. And then I was just holding back a little bit and I was doing four to six on my left. Then I would go back to my right and I would do again six to eight and then my left uh, four to six once again. Then after that, I combined it with a um, another exercise that requires no weights and uh, it's, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, it's uh, something you can just do on the floor and I'll show you here in a moment. Okay, as mentioned, now I'm gonna show you a side view of it so you can see a little better. Okay, now combined with my single clean and press, I'll do a circuit of going back and forth between the single clean press, doing uh, two sets as I just uh, uh, outlined in the video, uh, between right and left, going back and forth. I like the two set idea. It's, uh, it kind of gives me the right amount of recovery. Um, you know, somebody could play with that and just do one set on each side. You could do up to three, four sets on each side. Uh, again, play with this and there's no, uh, you know, there's no rule of thumb, just something I like. So now, after that, I come to this, and I believe this is a complementary exercise of the hip hinging, and it's some core exercise, some mobility, complements that exercise well. So it's just a simple uh, leg raise and uh, arm raise. So take my leg, and what I'll do is I'll just reach. Once I've done one side, again, whatever repetition's right for you, could be six, eight, 12, some of you even more. Then I go to the other side. Now I'd go back and duplicate what I did with the dumbbells, the single um, clean press, and I would do uh, uh, two sets on each side. Following this, I got right back up, went back to the dumbbells, and once again, did two sets, alternating between left and right twice. And I kept going through this, and I, I think after uh, after all was said and done, I probably did like five sets. Um, again, you can be, some days I wake up maybe a little less ambitious, a little less motivated, and do I feel three or four sets, or you know, two or three sets are good enough? I do. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of those people that anything is better than nothing. And uh, I've started some workouts some days where I'm like, ah, oh, two or three is gonna be enough. And I end up doing uh, eight or 10. I don't know what it is. You just get going and you feel good and you and uh, you just add in some extras. So, you know, never corner yourself and, and uh, make it so difficult on yourself mentally. You know, just, you know, I, I hate to say go with the flow. Um, 
but I guess that's what I do often and, and see how my energy feels. And um, I tell you this, after, you know, maybe 25 minutes, uh, this workout that I did, um, it feels great, right? It's, uh, I go to my bike now and I feel just much better that I've complemented something to the pedaling and the cardiovascular effort I'll make on my bike and I've done some important movements. So hopefully some of you can use some of this and uh, adapt to it well. And as always, I always say, send me a message if you have any questions about it. Maybe I can, maybe you have some uh, different equipment, etc. And otherwise, uh, I promise the uh, online training will outline a lot of this to come soon. We've, uh, we've decided that we're really gonna come out of the gates good with this uh, online training, uh, I believe, and really outline some great programs for everybody. Um, especially going into, uh, you know, now we're targeting more of the fall and uh, off season. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, thanks for uh, watching this.